you use third-party codes to enhance your apps? What if there was a way to increase privacy and security between apps, SDKs, and users, benefiting the entire Android ecosystem? The SDK Runtime is a new technology in Android 14 designed to build trust by isolating third-party code in a secure environment, a sandbox. Hi, I'm Zoe, and I'm a developer relations engineer on the Privacy Sandbox team. In this video, you'll learn how to use runtime-enabled SDKs, or RESDKs, from the app process. These RESDKs run in a secure, isolated environment called the SDK Runtime, and it's available in Android 14 with Jetpack backward compatibility. To make integration easier, SDK developers can create runtime-aware SDKs, or RESDKs. These SDKs run inside of the app's process and act as intermediaries. Array SDKs and apps use the SDK Runtime Manager to load and interact with runtime-enabled SDKs, but this communication happens at a low level. That's where the shim comes into play. The shim, or shim generation tools, help bridge the gap between low-level components and runtime-enabled SDK interfaces so that apps or array SDKs can use them. From now on, I'll refer to the app for simplicity, but remember that this also applies to array SDKs or games. To start using a runtime-enabled SDK, you first need to load it. Unlike conventional SDKs that run with the app, array SDKs won't be loaded in the runtime process by default. To do so, you use the SDK Manager or SDK Sandbox Manager Combat. This class, available in the SDK Runtime Jetpack Library, is the backward compatible version of the SDK Sandbox Manager. There are some things to consider when loading an array SDK. First, an app can only load SDKs that it depends on. Second, you can only load each SDK once. Finally, you can only load an SDK while the app is in the foreground. To load an array SDK, you need its package name. If it needs any additional parameters, pass them in a bundle. If not, pass an empty bundle. You can always initialize the SDK after loading, just like you would today. The SDK manager loads this runtime-enabled SDK and returns an object that contains the array SDK's information, such as its name and version, and an iBinder interface. The shim tools generate helpers to translate this interface into the RESDK's interface without the need for ADL imports. How do these helpers work? When the RESDK declared an entry point, that is, an annotating an interface with Privacy Sandbox service, the shim generated a few classes to support this translation. One of them is the factory class, named after the entry point. In this example, the interface annotated with Privacy Sandbox Service was called BotSDK. So the factory class will be called BotSDK Factory. This factory contains a static wrap to method that converts the iBinder interface into the SDK's API interface. The name of this method is also generated by the shim using the ARI SDK's entry point name. So in the example, the method will be called wrap to bot SDK. Now you can use this interface to start using the ARI SDK's APIs from the app. You'll use most of the APIs just like you would with a regular SDK. However, if you want to present UI or launch activities from the ARI SDK, there are some things that work differently. Let's start with UI presentation. When an ARI SDK presents UI components, these cannot be inspected by the app. SDKs cannot inspect the layout and views around their remote UI either. This helps preserve boundaries between both entities and increase privacy. How is this handled? The Jetpack UI libraries provide a side channel that the app and runtime-enabled SDK can use to show UI across processes and update it accordingly. We refer to these side channels as sessions. If you want to display the UI created by a runtime-enabled SDK, you need a sandbox SDK view. This sandbox SDK view acts as a container for the content from the sandbox UI adapter. Since APIs in the runtime-enabled SDK that present UI have to return a sandbox UI adapter or an implementation of it, 
all you have to do on the app is set the adapter of your Sandbox SDK view to the Sandbox UI adapter. This will open a session which presents the UI and starts notifying both the app and the SDK of any changes. Let's look into launching activities from the SDK runtime. Runtime-enabled SDKs cannot declare activities on their manifest and have a limited number of intents that they can launch. Since your app doesn't have direct access to a runtime-enabled SDK's resources, how can you launch an SDK-owned activity? To launch activities from the runtime, the SDK's API needs to accept an activity launcher. The SDK uses the launcher to launch activities from the SDK runtime process. To create this activity launcher, the Jetpack Activity Libraries provide you with an extension function called Create SDK Activity Launcher. You can use it from any of the app activities to create a launcher that will have that activity as a starting point. When you create the activity launcher, you will have to pass it a predicate. Every time the runtime-enabled SDK tries to launch an activity, it checks this predicate. If the predicate is true, the activity launches. And now, you can finally test this runtime-enabled SDK. To accelerate your journey, visit the Privacy Sandbox developer site. You'll find code samples, the SDK development guide, latest announcements, and channels for feedback. Thanks for watching. Watch the other episodes in this video series to learn more about how to build, consume, and test SDKs in the runtime.